The Lifestyle Show, presented by Selena McKenzie. Now, Sarah Sidebottom was raped and sexually abused by both her father and her brother. They were jailed in 2022 for a total of 32 years, and she now hopes to help others and has bravely, and I say bravely in a big way, opened up about her story in a book called The Letter. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Hello. Hi there. Applause to you. It couldn't have been easy writing the book and certainly not talking about it. Uh, yeah, it was a bit, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go too much into too many details, but what I can say is from your book that the first attack was when you were just three and a half years old. Yeah, I had um, a vague memory of it. And um, at that age, you didn't really know what was going on or or, or anything like that. And, um, and it... <laughs> find out later on it was horrific to find out the injuries that i'd received it was horrific i'm sure it was i'm sure it was and it was those injuries that that helped put your father away wasn't it yes um it was the what the police would say the golden nugget because they said it's very very rare to have uh, medical evidence on these type of cases so yes it did help put them you know to get my justice Good for you. May I ask, do you think your mother knew about what was happening? Um, I don't, I don't really know. She says not, but I mean, the, what was in the letter, it, it makes me wonder, did she have an inkling or I don't know what the conversation was between them two at the time. And it was, and, and unfortunately, because she passed away now, I can't get those answers. So it's been a bit difficult. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it has. And I was reading to the outside world that that your dad was a real charmer. He was a a local builder and larger than life, and everyone thought he was this great guy. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, He he was literally a pillar of the uh, village that we lived in and and did a lot of work for the local farmers. He, He had a bit of two sides to him. And, you know... But when we were at home, the two sides were different to what people would see on the outside. Because um, I used to feel that if he was nice to me, I had to be very, very afraid. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And I know he threatened you as well. I've got, I've got here that he threatened to shoot both you and your mother if you told anybody. Yes, yeah. And he used to keep guns, um, mostly in the garage, but... Um, I think if he wanted us to have, well, myself to have the threat um, taken seriously, sometimes have them in the house. Yeah. So when did it all end? When did the nightmare end with your father? Um, that, it, that, it literally ended when my parents split up. Uh, I was about 13, 12, 13 um, when they split up and um, we ended up moving back to Wales, where my grandmother lives, lived. And, um, yeah, it stopped from there because I didn't see him for quite some time. And then there was a court case and then we had to um, have, he had to, he, well, he was legally allowed to see us. Um, so we had to go through that. Um, as I was getting older, I didn't want to see him so much. But then, yeah, that's when the abuse stopped with him. And then, bless you, although it stopped with him, it then started with your brother. Yeah, he um, when my parents divorced, he was staying with my um, father at the time because he was working with him. And he decided, I think it's when my father was doing a visit, he came with him and um, came to visit us and decided that he'd wanted to stay with us. So he did. So like I was coming home from school one day and that's when it started. Oh. With him, just that, that it wasn't just once, it was twice, maybe three times, yeah. Bless you, bless you. So this letter then, when did this come about? Because it, it wasn't at the time, was it? It wasn't, wasn't until decades later that, that this letter appeared. Yeah, I became very ill um, in 2021 20, with pneumonia because this is the time where COVID hit. Yeah. And they were trying to say I had COVID and I'd had a chest X-ray a few months prior to finding the letter. And I said, oh, I wanted my chest X-ray results and all the results I had 
with my scans and everything. And I got the documentation and it was a whole, it was everything. So we were, well, well was, we were looking through the information and it was actually my husband that found it amongst the pile of paperwork. And he said, oh, I think you re- need to read this. And I said, oh, what's that? And I skimmed through it and I'm like, that must have been the time when he first abused me because I had a recollect, rec- a vague recollection because of the pain I had. And to see those, I was literally heartbroken. And I read um, most of what was in that letter. And in, my brother said, you need to read what was said on the bottom and say I'd fallen on a go-kart handle. It was just unreal. It was just... And for it to be hidden from me for so long yeah. it was that should that should yeah, have I'm, come out they, they must have known about it the hospital the hospital must have known about it my mother must have known about it my gps must have known about it but it was never mentioned Shit. i never knew i had actually had the surgery i don't even remember having the surgery i think when the incident happened i must have been you know on um block or something because I didn't remember much until a lot later I didn't even have um, a referral back to the doctors after having the surgery oh my word I mean who would I can't I can't remember past I don't know seven or something so at three and a half why would you remember yes yeah um it is it, it's, it's just I was so, so heartbroken and I wanted to speak to my mother about it. But because I'd spoken to the police to say I'd found it and how I got to come with it. And that's when I was informed it was the golden nugget and not to say anything because it would uh, be detrimental to the case because it could say that, you know, I knew about that letter because I think that was the evidence that I didn't know about the letter until later. So what did the police do then? Did they immediately arrest him and it went to court? Um, right. I do, um, I'd already done a, a statement. I did um, numerous statements. Um, they, of course, got my medical evidence and um, it took a while for them to give me a statement because the file was lost by the police. Yeah. Then they got another police officer on secondment. So it took about three and a half years to get to trial because there was a lot of mistakes. There was mistakes at court. They were not um, ready for, um, you know, the um, you know where they plead not guilty. Yeah. Um, that and it it was just a complete mess, really, and it, it just took a while to get to court. But he was arrested in. I think the February, there were about two or three weeks after they received my medical records. Right. Okay. And what about your brother? Was he arrested as well? Yeah, they were arrested at both at the same time. Oh, bless you for getting justice at last. And they're both in prison for a very long time. Yeah, my father has been given 20 years with one year on licence. And my brother has been given, well, he was given 18, then it got reduced to 12. Um, So he got 12 years. Well, I know you've turned something horrific and negative into a positive. You're now running a charity, I believe, with your husband. Yeah, I, I support him with Help Homeless Veterans, where we support veterans and get them off the street. And it's local to um, where I live. And yeah, we, I've been supporting them for about eight years. And I've just done a charity collection, which was difficult because it was the Barnsley Football Stadium. And we raised nearly £400 um, in just an hour and a half. That's amazing. I, I struggle with, yeah, I struggle with being in crowds and it was something that I had to do so I could overcome crowds. Yeah, you pushed yourself. And yes. Yeah, I, I, you know, I take spit, uh, bits at a time doing things to get me back to my, my mental health back on track. And I've got here that you were a guest at Buckingham Palace. Is that for your charity work? Yes. Yeah, we were nominated to attend Buckingham Palace with Princess Anne. And oh, wow. oh, it couldn't have come at a better time 
because we had the sentencing in May, but then it got cancelled because um, my father didn't turn up at court. So it was a great time just to not think about anything, not think about the trial or um, having to wait another month for um, another um, sentencing hearing. And it was amazing. I met some wonderful stars. <laughs> it was brilliant. Yes, we loved it. We, it we made it a long weekend. Yeah, it was fantastic. Special. And I know that your your husband, Darren, has been by your side, but, but somebody else who you share a special bond with, and I totally get this because I'm a dog lover, is Kayla, your German shepherd. Oh, yes. Um, because because our wedding did get cancelled in 2020 a couple of times and we decided to get married with just six of us. And we thought we ha- received the money back from the wedding and we decided to buy German Shepherd. And she has been the best. She's even stopped me from committing suicide on her numerous oh. occasions. And I walk her so I can get out the house because I, I started being a hermit a bit and didn't didn't want to leave the house because afraid because they were out on bail for a while um yeah she's been absolute wonderful she cuddles when it's bedtime she lays on the bed with me and I can because I used to have trouble falling asleep I'm allowed to um, play with her tail and it helps me fall asleep (laughs) and you you mentioned your mental health Kayla's been great and I know Darren's been great but but how are you feeling now is it is it easy to move on I'm getting there. I, I'm taking um, little steps. You know, after the trial, I had a mental breakdown where, you know, suicidal ideations, uh, self-harm. Um, but each each day is getting better. I had support from the uh, National Health uh, under the mental health team. And now they're referring me back to the local SARCs um, with certain other um therapy so which is good and i've also did some fundraising for them i did a 150 foot abseil which i'm terrified of heights i can't even stand on a ladder <laughs> so i did it and when i did it i said can i do it again <laughs> you're really pushing yourself aren't you into these challenges Oh, yeah, yeah, I am. And I raised a thousand pounds, 500 pounds for help for, lo- for homeless veterans and our local SARC. So. Oh, that's marvellous. And I believe yeah. um, Anne Cusack helped you write this book. She's she's a very well known author, isn't she? Yes, she's absolutely wonderful because it started off when she did a press release because I wanted to not feel ashamed of what happened to me. And she was so patient, fantastic, because I used to have a little bit of wobbles. And then it came to a discussion about doing a book and I was a bit sceptical and... And then my husband said, yes, yeah, so, well, it'll help with your mental health because you're thinking about things, going over things in your head. And it was therapy doing the book. It really, really helped me. And she was so patient. She's so lovely. And, you know, you know, my hat's off to her. And she wrote the book perfectly. Well, I say hats off to you. I don't think you should ever feel ashamed about anything. You're a complete inspiration. Um, And I'm going to give the details of your book out for our listeners now if they want to buy it. It's called The Letter, My 50-Year Fight for Justice. And it's by Sarah Sidebottom, who we're chatting to now, and of course, Anne Cusack. And I just want to say for our listeners here in Spain, if you're feeling overwhelmed or, or distressed or you're resonating with Sarah's story, then we do have SamaritansInSpain.com that you can contact Sarah thank you so much you're very very brave I admire and salute you thank you for being on the show with us today thank you for having me it's been a pleasure you have a good day bye 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 bye